All right, uh, time to work on our low resolution mesh a bit more. I've got uh, one half of a goblet running mirror and weld. Uh, my polygons are on the wrong side, uh, rotating 180 degrees. There are a few issues uh, with my topology here. Uh, I'm using Z modeler uh, to slide edges and delete extra loops. I'm optimizing it as much as I can. Uh, things that can be baked onto a flat plane uh, don't need to have extra geometry. I could have created extra geometry for my gemstones, uh, but I wanted to keep these videos nice and short uh, so they'll be flat as well. Uh, my next step is assigning polygroups to help me with my UV unwrapping in ZBrush. I'm running polygroups by normals command uh, with the slider set to 45 degrees. I don't use UV Master a lot, but it's really handy for small assets like this when you are short on time. Create an additional polygroups by isolating faces and pressing Ctrl W to create a new group. If you are using a select lasso brush, you can click on individual edges to select poly loops. Uh, groups are nice and organized, uh, going to uh, UV Master, uh, enabling polygroups and hitting unwrap. Press and flatten to preview my UVs. Mirroring the other half over. Uh, previewing my UVs. Uh, I accidentally pressed uh, unwrap and destroyed uh, my symmetrical UVs I've been working so hard for. Um, I will realize it later and fix it in Maya. Packing is obviously not perfect, but for the sake of a quick tutorial it will do. Uh, using move brush with radial symmetry to conform my low poly uh, mesh closer to the sculpt. Activating transparency so I can see things better. Disabling expert groups and exporting my low poly uh, mesh for a quick test bake in Substance Painter. As much as I want to tell you that once you have high poly and low poly meshes you are ready to bake, uh, in reality life is not so simple. Uh, usually there is a stage in between uh, where you need to prepare your meshes. Depending on complexity of your high poly, uh, you probably want to decimate it to improve bake times and minimize the amount of time it takes uh, to load your files. I'm going through all my subtools, applying dynamic subdivisions, uh, and merging my polygroups together so I can create color ID maps based on them later. Running auto groups and then uh, merge similar groups. Then Poly paint from groups to create my clown maps. Subtools that don't require complex color IDs can be just filled uh, with one color. Uh, fill object button can be found uh, in a color palette. Now uh, I'm about to decimate my high poly mesh, uh, making sure everything I want to decimate is visible. And in Subtool Master, I'm um, hitting uh, Do Visible and choosing correct duplicate subtool names. This will help me uh, avoid any errors. In Decimation Master, uh, I'm enabling Use and Keep Poly Paint. I like to do my decimation uh, one subtool at a time, easier on memory, and you don't have to wait 20 minutes just to realize that something went wrong and you need to restart the entire process. Picking my first subtool and hitting preprocess current. Once it's done, hitting decimate. Uh, if I get any artifacts, uh, I'm hitting undo, uh, increasing the percent of decimation and pressing decimate current again.
a merging floral pattern meshes together and expanding them out as a separate object. On the rest of the goblet I'm running merge command through subtool master and exporting it out as well. I'm bringing my low poly mesh into Maya. I'm softening all my edges and now over here at the top you can see I have uh, some weirdness going on. Uh, I'm gonna harden inner edge uh, to help our normal map baking engine inter interpret this shape better. Another thing that might uh, be worth doing is beveling this outer edge uh, to conform it better to the shape of the sculpt. Doing a quick bake test, uh, loading my low poly and high poly meshes. Uh, it's alright, but I'm not overly happy with my low poly mesh. Uh, I think uh, I went a little bit uh, too low poly. I'm jumping back into Maya and starting to optimize and subdivide uh, my low poly mesh a bit. It will pass as a background small scale prop, but definitely too low poly if you're using it for a first person shooter type of a game. I'm using insert edge loop uh, in Maya with edge flow option enabled. So whenever I insert a loop, uh, it will automatically try to round it up for me. Most of other 3D applications have this functionality as well. Right about here I realized that my UVs aren't symmetrical, so I'm only inserting edges on one half and then I'm mirroring the mesh over. Uh, it didn't work out from the first try, uh, flattening the edge loop and mirroring again. softening the symmetry seam now. Back to Painter, um, reloading uh, my mesh and you can see everything is broken uh, since uh, my UV have, UVs have changed, uh, rebaking my maps. Bake is done, uh, you can see my curved uh, lines look much much better after adjusting the curvature of the low poly mesh. There's a small issue with gemstones being too close to each other along the symmetry plane. Uh, I'll fix it later by rotating them uh, in my high poly mesh. I'm gonna throw a quick material on. Uh, we'll be using statue metal by Pavel uh, Litskovsky again. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. For gemstones I'm gonna use uh, one of my smart materials, deleting the fill layer since I don't uh, need it uh, for smart stuff. Uh, right clicking my smart material and choosing add mask with color selection. Uh, this will let me uh, pick a color from my color ID map. I'm expanding my smart material and adjusting colors uh, to my liking. I can repeat the same process uh, for my uh, embossing pattern uh, to make it pop more. Uh, for starters, let's uh, just affect the height of my pattern. I'm making uh, sure my fill layer only affects the height. Adding a mask with color selection and uh, choosing my color IDs. Now you can see I can just drag the slider and make uh, the design pop uh, more if I need to. What I also can do uh, is add a little bit of a blur to this mask. Uh, I'm alt-clicking on the mask to preview it, uh, right-clicking on it to add a filter and choosing blur. What blur does is that it softens the transition between my heights and gives me a slightly softer look uh, and it also helps to eliminate uh, excessive noise. Uh, let's say this is what I'm going for. But I think I could use a little bit more cowbell. I want some roughness variation uh, and the embossed part uh, could have a little bit of a color variation as well. I'm dragging one of my existing metals into my masked fill layer uh, to quickly preview different looks uh, that I can get.
Back to my statue medal, uh, tweaking some colors. Uh, this particular material has scratches and metal flake properties, a really handy to create old metallic surface. Decreasing some of the aging effects, uh, it started to look a, a bit too dark. So let's create some uh, roughness variation, adding a fill layer that only affects roughness. What I'm doing here is uh, I'm grabbing a procedural noise map uh, and applying it to my roughness, and then I can mask it out uh, with a mask generator. This way I can generate a random noise and control precisely the way I want to distribute it. You can see uh, our goblet got uh, pretty gross looking really quick. Playing with sliders to adjust uh, the look of the noise. Now I'm adding a generator and applying a mask editor to it. Uh, playing with the contrast and balance sliders. The way it works is uh, if you crank up uh, ambient occlusion, more noise will be distributed in the crevices and areas where ambient occlusion is the strongest. If curvature slider is cranked up, uh, your noise will be applied to parts that stick out the most, and so on. Let's add some dust to our cup. A uh, new fill layer only affects color and roughness. Setting it to gray and fully rough. Adding a black mask and now I can apply smart masks onto my fill layer and see what I can get. Stacking another layer of noise on top, just because I can. Uh, I'm gonna fix those gemstones placement by rotating them uh, directly onto the symmetry line, grabbing my high-res mesh uh, and masking out everything but gemstones. Going into top view and rotating them uh, with the rotate command uh, under deformation tab uh, until they're aligned. We're expert in my high poly mesh. So in this final step, what I like to do is hide all my layers and then start on hiding them one by one and fight, fine tune each layer as I go. I do it every time and each time it really helps to kind of go back to a start and kind of replay your entire process to identify the parts that could be better. Uh, so I've started with a statue metal. It looked like uh, aging was still uh, too dark on it, so I'm starting to tone it down. Then I realized that my shadows were still on. Uh, disabling sh shadows and fine-tuning. Gemstones look fine, uh, moving to the next layer. I don't really like the yellow, desaturating and brightening it a bit. Examining my roughness. Top layer I'm not sold on. Uh, disabling color so it only affects roughness. Uh, making it fairly rough and adding a generator. In the generator I'm using a position gradient. What I want to do is to make the top part of the goblet more shiny uh, and the parts closer to the bottom uh, would be more rough. You can see I can move my gradient up and down with a balance slider.
previewing my asset in different lighting scenarios, uh, it always helps. Uh, I feel like it could uh, use a, a bit more contrast, so I'm cranking up the darkness and saturation on my base color. And here you have it, a low poly game asset. Um, I will put the links to the project files and the final model in the description of this video. If you liked my tutorial and want to see more, uh, definitely check out my Patreon page. Your support helps me to focus on creating more awesome videos and models for you, and it really means a lot to me. Thanks a lot and see you guys soon.